The next generation of iPhone, the iPhone 14, is coming in just a few months and nobody cares. So, let's instead discuss an iPhone that may very well never come out, ignoring what actually makes sense for Apple to do strategy-wise, while still trying to make something that's not flat out impossible to produce, how would the ideal iPhone look like? Obviously, the changes I made for this concept are the ones I would personally like to see, and the first one has to do with the aspect ratio. With the iPhone 10, Apple completely redesigned the front panel of the iPhone, by giving it a way taller display. The reason why I think that was such a great change is because if you think about it, the vast majority of the content we see on smartphones is vertical. From websites to social media apps, they are mainly just vertical lists of stuff you can scroll. By having a taller aspect ratio, the user sees simply sees more stuff at once, so why not do it again? And that's why, in my concept, the ideal iPhone has a 21 by 9 aspect ratio. Keep in mind that the width of all the various phones in the lineup would remain the same, the only thing that would change is the height. Something else you may have noticed is the complete absence of notches, dots, spills, or whatever. I mean, do I even have to explain why that would be better? Hiding cameras behind displays, at the very least, has been proven to be possible. And while some of the results we've seen from this technology haven't been exactly great, I'm pretty sure Apple can do better than that. Remember, for example, how smartwatches were before and after the first Apple Watch? There's no contest. They spend copious amounts of money on research and development every single year. I'm sure if they had the will, they would definitely be able to make an iPhone without a visible front-facing camera. If they had the will. If you follow the news, you have definitely seen the leaked iPhone 14 Pro 3D model. Assuming they are legit, for some reason they replaced the notch with I have no idea what the thing is. Why do you think does it look like that? Is there any functional purpose to having such a small gap between the sensors? No, obviously. They are doing it because nobody else is. It's just a very easy way to be recognizable. Simple as that. The only possible utilitarian justification I could think of for choosing such a weird shape instead of just a straight line like everyone else is that maybe it was to differentiate it from the bar at the bottom, but really your guess is as good as mine. But even though a perfectly clean and minimal iPhone with no notches or camera holes is not something I think we should expect, at least officially from Apple, something I am expecting is always on display. This feature has been on Android phones for years at this point, and even the Apple Watch has it actually. But the reason why I'm convinced that it's at least eventually coming to the iPhone, besides the fact that it's obviously very very useful and cool is because essentially Apple has no other choice at this point. Again, have you seen the leaked 3D models? While the pros are at least trying to look a bit different with even bigger cameras on the back, because that's exactly the main complaint everyone had with the previous iPhones, the base models literally look the same. There's no discernible difference. Obviously, the mini is getting replaced by an iPhone 14 Max non Pro because it apparently was just too great for this reality to handle, but still. That's a new model, not a new feature, and according to some leaks, which I really hope are wrong, the new chip, the A16, will be exclusive to the Pro and the Pro Max. So what's even new about the iPhone 14 non-Pro? Well, maybe it's always on display. Obviously that's just an hypothesis, it's still completely possible that those new iPhones will have improved chips and that they will be way more interesting than we think, but it doesn't matter if it's this year, the next one, or the one after. The list of stuff left to alter is finite, it's shrinking every year, and what's left is always more boring. The always on display is simply one of those few features left on the list that even in the worst case scenario wouldn't be that controversial, as users would realistically be able to toggle it off if they really didn't like it. So unless there is a very specific and weird internal reason why Apple just hates the concept of an AOD on an iPhone, because they don't seem to have a problem with the watch having one, I think we will see an always on display on a future iPhone. Doesn't have to be the 14, but still. In my concept, the always on display is comprised of obviously the hour and basically a bunch of icons which are your notifications. And they tend to become smaller and more blurred out as time goes by, obviously to bring more attention to the newer notifications. All the elements are also constantly moving ever so slightly to minimize the risk of burn-in. This concept is actually from an older video I made, but I wanted to reuse it because almost no one watched it. Now, for something I know for a fact will never happen, Matt sites on Pro models. To differentiate the Pro iPhones from the base models, Apple mainly uses three things. The camera, which I will also have something to say about later in the video, the matte glass, which feels and looks amazing, and the glossy stainless steel sides, my favorite disgrace to mankind. Why am I saying that? Well, because they look very cool in renders, for like one second after you open the box, 
and that's it. Every moment after you will be reminded of your own filth. Plus, they scratch like crazy. That's not what I call durable design. My ideal iPhone should have both the sides and the back opaque. Now, something that pretty much everyone wants. USB-C. It's faster and it's compatible with many more devices, including many from the Apple ecosystem itself. Even Apple agrees that it's a better port, otherwise why would they have replaced Lightning with it on all those iPads? Normally I'd be completely hopeless talking about something that despite all the people asking, they very intentionally avoided adding to the iPhone for all these years. But, with the European Union pressing so hard for USB-C to become a universal standard, I think there is a bit of hope. The next feature has to do with one of the things you do multiple times every day with a phone, unlocking it. When designing a system, one of the logical ways to make it faster to use is by optimizing the operations that are repeated the biggest amounts of times. Because if something takes 5 seconds to do, and it's done 100 times a day, if you manage to make it last 3 seconds, it may not feel that big of a deal at first, but you will have saved the user hours in the long run. One of the most boring things to do on smartphones is unlocking them, precisely because it's something you will end up doing dozens of times every day. Apple recognized this, and with the iPhone 5S they introduced Touch ID to make unlocking the phone faster and more seamless. Over the years, the technology improved, until it eventually got replaced by Face ID, which was still pretty fast, but most importantly, even more seamless. To unlock the phone, you just need to look at it. It's ingenious when it works. Face ID simply doesn't work at some angles and when you have stuff covering your face, What's the solution? Many have proposed that Apple should just bring Touch ID back, as in literally embedding the Touch ID sensor on the power button like they already do on some iPads. My solution actually involves bringing it back, but in a different way. In my ideal iPhone, Touch ID, which should be under the display, shouldn't be one of the various options to unlock the phone. It should be complementary to Face ID. The names Face ID and Touch ID should completely disappear, because the method of unlocking the phone I'm envisioning would use both technologies at the same time. Unlocking the phone, not when the fingerprint sensor has scanned the right finger in the right way or Face ID recognizes the complete face, but simply when the phone, by using snippets of data gathered by both kinds of sensors, is sure enough that the correct user is the one trying to use the phone. Basically, when a threshold of certainty is reached, no matter how, the phone is unlocked. This would simply be the next logical step after Face ID and Touch ID. Let's now talk about the camera, and no, I'm not referring to the quality. I know next to nothing about photography and Apple improves the camera quality of their phones basically every year. That's not the problem I have. What I would change about the camera in my ideal iPhone is the shape. Even ignoring the aesthetic, this camera is terrible design-wise. On the newer models, like the 13 Pro, the bump is so thick that even with a case, even the one made officially by Apple, the phone won't lay flat. If you try to use the phone while it's sitting on a table, it'll just wobble like crazy. I understand that because of how massive those cameras are, it's it's simply not possible to make them flush with the back of the phones anymore. But that doesn't mean there's no other way. In my concept, the whole camera module is laid out in a row that goes from one edge of the phone to the other, and the module is consistently of the same thickness, so that when you place the phone on a flat surface, it will remain stable. In my humble opinion, this would be the perfect type of design, but I'm already anticipating some of the criticism. The phone is too tall. How is anyone going to interact with the UI elements at the top? Fair point, but you know what? I think iPhones already had that problem. It would get worse, yeah, but it's not a new problem per se. And actually, this issue can and should be solved with software, regardless of how tall the phone is. And that's one of the things I address in this concept here, among many others. Check it out if you want. Ciao!